Hello Internet and welcome back to Financial Journey. As always, my name is Alex and on this channel we talk all things personal finance because, let's face it, the school system certainly isn't going to do it. Today I want to continue to delve into the FIRE movement and discuss the three classical types of FIRE, as they're all pretty related to one another. So if you're eager to escape the rat race and live your best life, smash the like button and stay tuned, because this is the step-by-step -step guide to lean fire, traditional fire, and fat fire. Given that you've clicked on this video, I'm going to guess you're probably familiar with the FIRE movement, but here's the Cliff Notes version. FIRE stands for Financial Independence, Retire Early. It is a movement characterized by people who save and invest heavily, usually early in life, in order to build up a retirement nest egg that can sustain them long before the traditional retirement age of 60, 65, or even later in life. Key aspects of this include increasing income and cutting expenses in order to accelerate this objective. Once the investments surpass 25 to 35 times their anticipated retirement expenses, fire practitioners are able to quit their jobs, retire, and simply live off the residual passive income and asset appreciation, at least theoretically indefinitely, assuming that they maintain the same standard of living. If you'd like a more comprehensive explanation of fire, I'll leave a link to my previous video in the description below, but we're gonna keep on moving along for this video. When it comes to the exact definition of different types of fire, there are definitely some differences depending on who you ask, but I'll give the ones that I'm most familiar with. Lean fire, traditional fire, and fat fire all follow the same overall plan described above. The biggest difference is the budget you intend to draw once you retire. However, despite modest differences in the definitions, the implications can actually be quite impactful and not always readily apparent. So let's start off talking about the fastest route to an early retirement, and that is lean fire. Lean fire is for those who want to retire on as little as possible. This usually involves living a minimalist lifestyle to cut down on costs. Again, the definitions vary, but the most prevalent definition I've seen is lean fires for those looking to withdraw less than $40,000 per year in retirement. I'll note here, you do still adjust your withdrawals for inflation in fire, so even lean fire folks will ultimately end up withdrawing more than $40,000 per year, but the initial withdrawal rate is below this threshold. The main benefit of lean fire is, of the three we're gonna discuss today, it is by far the fastest path to early retirement simply by nature of requiring the smallest savings and retirement nest egg. Using the 4% rule, which simply states that you could withdraw 4% of your portfolio annually, thus the 25 times your annual withdrawal rate, someone striving to achieve lean fire would need $750,000 for a $30,000 per year income, or $1 million for $40,000 per year. There are some who have done this in retired on less, but these are more realistic values for most, even though they're still pretty tight. Lean Fire is designed for those with very simple lifestyles and really does require maximizing the use of these funds. Those practicing Lean Fire usually drive older cars or use the cheapest forms of public transportation despite any inconveniences and in many cases eliminate transportation expenses almost entirely by walking or biking to their destinations. House hacking, living with roommates, or cutting way back on housing expenses is usually required. Those in lean fire oftentimes clip coupons, find opportunities to enjoy free meals, use travel hacking to bring down their travel budgets, and have very limited budgets for entertainment. None of these things are wrong by any means, and in fact, I encourage those who can do so responsibly to travel hack using credit card rewards. But because of the limited income and finite savings, these are necessary for most people who undertake lean fire. Personally, while achieving lean fire means you can quit your job and have your basic needs met, I think this is by far the riskiest path to fire, and one that can be easily blundered. 
One thing that many looking to enter FIRE forget about is the cost of health insurance and healthcare in general. Most employers provide a substantial subsidy towards health insurance for their employees. So this cost can greatly increase once seeking insurance on the open exchanges, even if there is a subsidy provided by the government. Not to mention the cost of healthcare is rising each and every year, usually faster than the rate of inflation. So those practicing lean fire may not be able to keep up with the premiums, deductibles, copays, and coinsurance associated with the rising cost of healthcare. And beyond that, any major unexpected expense, a car accident, unexpected health expenses, a blown AC unit, having kids, and so on can effectively destroy the possibility of a sustainable retirement. There are some methods to mitigate this cost and these risks, including things like barista fire, which I will describe in a future video, but they do remain a real concern for those wanting to truly retire. While the easiest to achieve, lean fire is the most restrictive version of fire. And while people's individual circumstances differ, and I'm not a financial advisor, my belief is that most people should probably avoid this as their end goal. Moving on, let's actually talk about the other end of the spectrum, which is fat fire. Fat fire is for those who want to live large once they retire early. But this usually refers to those wanting to live on at least $100,000 per year in retirement. Some will set fat fire at $120,000 per year, others at $200,000, or even more, to well exceed this middle class lifestyle, particularly for those that want to retire in high cost of living areas. But the concept here is ultimately the same. With fat fire, most people would not need to deprive themselves in their early retirement. They can afford the nice home, the nice car, travel at least a few times a year, hit the like button, support their kids' college if they so choose, and possibly even do more depending on how much they've saved. Now, the biggest downside to Fat Fire is simply the obligation that it takes to get there. Again, using the 4% rule, one would need to save a minimum of $2.5 million to enter the lowest end of Fat Fire, which is, of course, at least 2.5 times as much as for lean fire. And you can only cut your expenses so much. There are basic things you have to pay for. So those looking to achieve fat fire usually need considerable income or to really supplement their incomes to speed their way towards this much larger goal. Of course, both of those will also speed you towards lean or even traditional fire. So regardless of your income, it will take you longer to reach fat fire than the more modest goals. Fat fire does come with the benefit of peace of mind as in most parts of the United States and indeed the world, this income will be more than sufficient and there's plenty of room to adjust your lifestyle if necessary. And finally, there's traditional fire. Traditional fire is a happy medium between lean fire and fat fire, usually with practitioners planning to live off roughly the US median household salary. So somewhere in the ballpark of $70,000 per year. For many people, this level of income will actually exceed the amount that they were living on pre-fire because they no longer need to be saving for retirement. However, the increased annual spending also comes with a larger required nest egg, at least relative to lean fire. For $70,000 a year, one would need at least $1.75 million saved, according to the 4% rule. For most people, traditional fire will allow them to live a basic middle class life without needing to save nearly as much as someone striving for fat fire. They have the money to pay for a mortgage or for rent if they need to, but can of course employ strategies to reduce housing expenses if they simply like additional spending money. Most will drive used cars, but there's probably money left in the budget if they'd like to save for a new one. Or that extra money can be used for travel, for entertainment, or to cover unexpected expenses, larger healthcare premiums, and so on. This is the minimum level of fire that I would encourage most to strive for, as there's 
at least a little bit of wiggle room if everything doesn't work out exactly the way you envisioned it. So let's look at these all together. There's pros and cons to each of them, and ultimately, these represent the trade-off between how quickly you get to retire and your security and comfort once you get there. If you're looking to retire in your 20s or 30s, unless you're making a multiple six-figure income and saving the vast majority of it, you may simply not have the time to grow your funds to reach fat fire, or potentially even traditional fire. For example, a 20-year-old with no savings, looking to retire at age 35, would, assuming a 7% average annual rate of return, need to invest $9,000 a month to reach fat fire, and even a little over $3,500 a month to reach lean fire. However, fire isn't just for those wanting to retire incredibly young and those looking to shave just a few years or even a couple decades off their retirement can find these goals far more achievable. If that same 20-year-old were to save $2,500 per month, they would reach fat fire before age 50 and be able to retire a full 15 years before their traditional retirement age on a $100,000 per year income. And yes, the earlier one starts, the easier this becomes. But the example I gave assumed a zero savings starting point. If you're not 20 anymore, any savings you do have will greatly speed up the process. So what do you think? Which version of FIRE is right for you? As we'll discuss in future videos, there's even a few additional options. But are you even working towards the goal of early retirement? Let me know down in the comments section below. I truly enjoy making these videos and plan to continue uploading twice a week, but I need your motivation, so please leave this video a like so that I know you enjoyed the content. And if you'd like to see more videos on personal finance, investing, fire, and my own financial journey, please consider becoming a subscriber. And if you do, be sure to ring the bell so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. I'll see you in the next one.